Welcome everybody, I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research and I'm here at Pure Storage Accelerate, uh, uh, that's Pure Storage's user conference and I'm here at the Worldwide Technology Stand and I'm joined by Brian Bartel from Worldwide Technology and Jeff Fonke. Uh, just a quick intro on yourself, what you do for WWT. Sure. Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, so my name is Brian Bartel, uh, I'm with WWT, uh, and I am the primary storage practice manager, uh, covering uh, obviously the globe with WWT. Uh, thanks, Brian. And my name is Jeff Funky. I'm uh, also uh, in our uh, sales organization. I am a data center specialist for our central region. I've uh, been around worldwide about 23 years and uh, have been involved in the storage business uh, all for 20 of those years. So and you guys, thanks for having us. And you guys have been working with Pure for quite a while, right? You're oh, yeah. We've been uh, partner of the year probably the last five years in various fashions. So this year, worldwide, excited to announce that worldwide is the worldwide partner of the year. Yeah. So. yeah. And I'm, well, I'm looking forward to this discussion. It's, a, yeah. it's an exciting space right now. Yeah. So I'll start with you, Brian. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, everything you read about continues to indicate that storage continues to grow by leaps and bounds. In fact, every projection I've ever seen tends to be conservative in nature. Absolutely. Even yeah. though, even though when they they seem outrageous, and I think I saw somewhere ninety five percent of all data ever created has been created in the last two years. So, what what's driving that trend today? Yeah, I mean, I think a couple things drive that trend. One, it, one is just the explosion of where we're collecting data, right? There's sensors and all kinds of different aspects of things that generate data, right? So there's a, a massive um, increase in, in the amount of things that are actually creating data. And then obviously there's, you know, the, the issue of, of people not necessarily wanting to throw things away. So a lot of data gets created. A lot of times that data is, is used for a short period of time and, and people don't necessarily want to get rid of the data, right? So we have, you know, data that's getting generated, data, data that's not getting thrown away. Obviously it's a huge hockey stick effect and we can continue to see massive data increases. Yeah, and uh, obviously they talked about some of those trends on stage. Mm -hmm. And since we're at the event, I'm just curious, any immediate thoughts from the show? You, what, what were you hoping to get out of the show here? Yeah, I think it was great. It was, A, one, it's great to be back in person around people to get to, you know, <laughs> to, to, get, to get to interact and have these kind of conversations. If that, I gotta do one more Zoom call, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, I know, I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you. So, you know, it's, it's just been, it's been wonderful to be back in person and feel the energy that, that's being brought. Um, you know, this is my first Pure Accelerate conference, and I'll say that, you know, it, it exceeded expectations. It's, it's a great atmosphere. There's a lot of great energy, you know, from from Pure and from the, the partner community and the customers and everything here. Uh, and, and to be honest, you know, it, it, it hit a lot of really good salient points, and I thought that they've got a really great focus on what they're trying to do here. So, you know, from all of those aspects, I've been very pleased and very happy I came. Yeah, and how about you, how about you sure, Jeff? Yeah, no, I think um, I'm super excited to see Pure, you know, Pure build out their portfolio, and, and now it's a, a, at a point, and it's an inflection point where we definitely, um, maybe Mike, how's it going? No, um, we can definitely um, dig into um, uh, use time. cases, <laughs> use cases that we never would have been able to use Pure with, right? So their new E platform, they, they announced FlashBlade E earlier this year. We've got Flash Array E now to really complete that archival type storage put, footprint. Uh, the uh, exciting new announcements around Sapphire Rapids and the increase in performance performance, the security things that they're doing, um, you know, just leading the edge and, uh, you know, and, and carrying through with the promises they make their customers, I think it's, it's really exciting. And uh, I'm with you, you know, there, there's a, a, a really close crossing of where that disk could potentially be dead in the next few years, yeah. and Pure's leading the way in that. So. Yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that, Brian. Uh, uh, you know, I know you've been in storage a long time. Yep. Uh, if you watch Charlie Giancarlo, their CEO's keynote, he talked about that, right? That flash is really starting to eat away at disk, it's been viewed as too expensive, but the price points are coming down. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the emerging use cases uh, for Flash now? Because it's not just, you know, it's not just your additional hot storage now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flash, when it you know initially came out, right, everybody thought, you know, let's let's find the things that really need the performance of yeah. Flash, right? That was a lot of what generated, you know, where the adoption was. Um, as the price and, and the technology changes and the price comes down, it becomes a more you know uh, cost-effective price point that you know closely aligns to you know storage or, or to disk, like actual spinning disk. Um, you know that that helps bring you know open up the markets and opens up you know the the things like long-term archive and just different types of storage that maybe doesn't need the performance. Performance, but you know, it could definitely needs to be online. And it could use a more cost-effective mechanism. That you know, for now, disk has been the space for that. Yeah, I know one of the trends that uh, Giancarlo has talked about since his arrival, actually, as CEO, of, I think, a few years now, is artificial intelligence. How does yeah. Flash enable AI? Yeah, so it, you know, it helps and it allows you to do um, you know all kinds of different things. It allows the high performance. The the you know the the, the AI generates a lot of 
you know, performant needs and you got to get, you know, access the day and do a lot of computational things. So it allows high performance storage and, and flash is really the mechanism to, to allow that to happen. Yeah, in fact, one of the trends that uh, Jiren Carlin and I talked about when he first started was in order for AI to work, you need three things. Uh, flash, fast, fast processors, fast storage, fast network. Yep. And if you look at network speeds, I mean, we're getting 800, we're getting close to terabyte networking. Mm -hmm. uh, on the processor side, I mean, you look at the performance of NVIDIA and GPUs that are through the roof, and the missing piece was storage, yep. right? And so flash storage and NVMe coming, I guess, uh, really does that. And what about sustainability? That, that's another topic that I think is an underappreciated aspect of this transition to flash. Yeah, I think when it comes to you know the the, the power and cooling and the way that you know the, the data centers operate, you know, from a sustainability and a you know an environmental standpoint, right? These kind of things, um, you know. When you can reduce your footprint significantly, you can be you know more power effective, or, you know efficient. You could be more you know efficient around cooling things of that nature. You know that's where Flash is really kind of driving that that change and that adoption is in the space of you know making things you know more eco friendly, but power cooling all of those things are becoming constraints for a lot of customers. This allows them to recover some of that data center space. Yeah, it's it's interesting too because the footprint's so much smaller, mm -hmm. it cools easier, and so you go from these massive traditional storage arrays of spinning disk, these smaller blades that hold the same amount of data, and that uh, uh, it's the whole concept of the more you buy, the more you save, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's exactly right, yeah. absolutely, yeah, very yeah. much. Very in fact, much. I think the storage footprint in data centers, last data point I saw was about 25% of all data center space is storage, Yeah. right? So if you can consolidate that down, I mean, just think of the massive amount of savings there is, right? So, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, um, and I'll, I'll, let me go back yeah, to you, sure. Jeff. That's, yeah, sure. So you talked about uh, the, the great portfolio that Pure is together. Talk about the relationship worldwide technology has with Pure and how you two work with customers to help them solve yeah, their problems. It's a, it's a great point and I appreciate the question. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think, you know, when we, when we partnered with, with Pure, um, they had been in the market for four or five years and we spend a lot of time with enterprise class customers, right? So um, what we've seen over the last five, six years is those enterprise class customers are really starting to adopt Pure, Pure solutions. They love their block product. Um, the fact that the portfolio is full, you know, continue to grow, right, into FlashBlade, next generation QLC with the C platform, all the different things that they have, um, you know, as, as one of the, the top partners always, we definitely have uh, had direct connectivity in line to the business units that run all of these different platforms, and we're beta testing a lot of that stuff for Pure specifically, and for our customers in the lab, right? So I, I think as we align with Pure, and we do different uh, beta test early adoption things, um, we're oftentimes getting a lot of those different products uh, in the ATC before they, uh, and, and our advanced technology center before they go um, to general available, generally available. So no, having that level of knowledge and data-driven um, decision points, it allows us to really be experts for our customers and clients together. Um, we, you know, we're very proud of our advanced technology center, and uh, I just, you know, give a shout out to the Pure team that has invested heavily in that. I mean, we've got all of their products in the ATC, and we're able to showcase that real time. So, for those that aren't familiar with the ATC, can you do a little bit more of a double click on that? What, what yeah. is that? Yeah. You know, so, <coughs> so, yeah, and I say ATC like it's an acronym. Everybody yeah. in the world yeah. knows, just because we live and breathe it. It's yes. part of our. Every time DNA, I talk right? to yeah. worldwide technology, I get the ATC. Yeah. Uh, so it's update. It, it, it's <laughs> one of the most state of the art labs in the world. Uh, we definitely we've got five five data centers in St. Louis. We've got a cloud connected uh, facility out uh, via Equinix. Um, and, and yeah, what, what I like to call the wonderland of storage is our flash lab. I, I had the pleasure of doing a lot of POC testing in that lab, right? And uh, you know, we do a lot of work uh, with all of those different manufacturers. So the things that we do in the ATC is, uh, you know, we bring solutioning to customers where uh, just a, an individual OEM can't do it by themselves, right? They, they need, you can't do just anything with a storage array. You need compute, you yes. need network. Customers may want to test things. I, I sit here and I look around, you've got Cirrus Data, you've got Commvault and Veeam, all of these alliance partners, we've got those in the lab. And we've done migrations with Cirrus Data. Uh, we've shown customers how that works to get platform A to, to pure, right? Um, uh, all the alliance partnership on the data protection side. Um, we've got data protection in, in our lab and uh, we're, we're seeing an uptick in using pure as a target for data protection software, which is really, really interesting. Not just from a rapid recoverability perspective, but now we've got the FlashBlade E and, and we can do archival type stuff. A huge well. ransomware recovery, yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, when you tie it in a, uh, in a bow, uh, the ATC is really the uh, the catalyst to help our customers make decisions a whole lot faster than uh, they could if they had to get all the different products and put them in their lab and test it themselves. So, yeah, and so I, I guess a good way to think about this is, uh, you know, historically when you think about data centers, 
uh, we would deploy things in racks. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was really siloed, yep. and uh, we had these almost, you know, turnkey systems, right? And now we were in such a rush to disaggregate everything mm -hmm. that we got to put these things back together. But mm -hmm. none of this stuff's plug and play, right? No, no. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, there's a whole lot that goes into it, and, and I think the the uh, the level of integrations that we have. And I'll just give a quick example. I mean, the like right now, you mentioned AI. We've got DGX A100s in the lab, and we actually have Pure connected to those right now. So it's pretty cool. We get to do some testing with that and really understand the performance characteristics. And we'll get to do some. Uh, we were talking with the Flashblade BU earlier this week. We'll get to do some early adoption stuff with. Uh, things that are coming with, with the flash blade. So, um, you know, just to be able to do that level of integration with the level of technology that's involved, that's something that takes, you know, months to years for customers to get done. We're If we've already done it, we can help educate and enable those customers right out the gate with things we've done already. And if, if customers want to do, you know, this transition from more disk to more flash uh, in more places, what are some of the challenges they may see and, and how might they use the ATC to Yeah, help I, I think, you know, the, 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 the one thing that they would use the ATC a lot for in the past, right, was when the all-flash evolution, 2016 was the year of all-flash. Everybody had the all-flash whiz-bang thing, so we spent hours and weeks and months testing flash systems. Now you've got this shift in paradigm, you know, a few years ago, if you told me you were going to put object on flash, I'd laugh because yes. cheap and deep is object storage, right? <laughs> yeah. But now you're seeing all these object use cases, uh, and, and obviously Pure's done a very nice job integrating that. So I think at, the, at this point, the biggest use case for, for some of the, the um, less performant flash um, is you know being tested in the data protection space, right? So um, you know how can Pure's density help improve how much data you can put on a, a backend storage array that's going through a software product like you know Commvault or Veeam or uh, some of the other alliance partners. So um, that's a use case that we see a, a lot of testing happening. Um, you know the, the the one thing they're at a price point comparison where you know Charlie mentioned this uh, twenty cents a gig for the new e platforms. Yeah, that's uh, huge. it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and that's getting close to a point where if we can put that in the lab and stand it up against two spinning disk uh, solutions and showcase how that the the TCO of having that in an all flash footprint with the data reduction and all the things that you can do with it um, versus those spinning disks, I think that's really just going to add value to the customers that want to see it. So. Yeah, great. Now, if you want to, if customers want to try the ATC out, do they actually have to go to St. Louis? No, no. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think that's the one thing that over the last few years we've taken a lot of time and pride in building and developing our WWT.com platform, right? So, uh, to me, that's the digitization of what's physically in St. Louis. Um, if you go to WWT.com with your uh, your email address, simply your business email address and sign up, you'll have access to all the labs that we have, the great things we're doing with Pure. Um, Self-launchable labs, you can spend time learning Ansible with Pure, you can spend time uh, learning how you know Pure integrates with uh, the various secondary products and, and the data protection providers. So um, yeah, so it's a very much a virtual experience with labs and videos and uh, you know an ecosystem of all the partnerships that you can launch these things on demand. All right, well I can include the link below in the YouTube yeah. description, but it really is just www.com, right? It is, yeah, www.www.com. Yeah. All right, uh, well, Jeff, uh, Brian, anything else you want to add? No, I think I appreciate the time today. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, thank you very much, we appreciate it, and yeah. just happy to be here. No, yeah. thanks, and uh, obviously you guys have, seems like you're everyone's partner of the year, so uh, <laughs> keep up the good work, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So on, uh, on behalf of Jeff and Brian, I'm C.S. Carroll from ZK Research. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next video.